Every day that passes, an entire species of American plant life dies out forever. In other parts of the world, the rate is far greater, with 20,000 species facing imminent extinction. What a staggering loss these figures mean to the health of the world's people, to agriculture, to industry, to grazing, not to mention the sheer beauty that may vanish forever. Unlike such popular endangered animals as the panda and the snow leopard, the lowly plants rarely get the kind of attention that would help with their preservation. Yet wherever we look today, rare and potentially valuable plants are in danger of extinction. Plants contribute to nearly everything we use daily, from our homes and furniture to the food we eat. From clothing and cosmetics to the oxygen we breathe. Like many of us, Harold Kupowitz appreciates the beauty of flowers. He began collecting them as a five-year-old child in South Africa. In 1976, Kupowitz learned that a new plant species went extinct every week. Experts believe that worldwide, two to three species now become extinct each day, and that the rate will exceed 20 per day by the end of the century. Ideally, plant species are protected when their habitats are protected. But until the tremendous destruction of natural habitats is curtailed, additional efforts are needed to slow the loss of species. For Kupovitz, this meant coming up with a way of saving plants away from their natural habitats. His solution was simple and elegant. He began to freeze the seeds. This method is known as cryogenic gene storage. For most of his career, Kupovitz built a distinguished reputation as a neurobiologist studying such humble invertebrates as these flatworms. Plants were a hobby, a second love. His first step was to establish an arboretum. A few years later, he began the first cryogenic seed bank in North America. Many of the flowers that Kupovitz grows here at the arboretum he directs at the University of California at Irvine are native to South Africa. There, the Moreas, gladioli, aloes and orchids that Kupovitz loves face an uncertain future. We were setting up a model system which meant that we wanted to be able to attract the attention of other gardens and institutions and we ended up choosing a group of plants from South Africa where the climate is almost identical to Southern California and has spectacular flowers. We decided then we'd go out and try and get representatives of all of the species. We'd grow them here, we'd build up stocks of seed, we could then process the seed and freeze it. By processing I mean we take the seed, dry it partially, and then we can freeze it at minus 40 degrees centigrade. Once it's frozen, the seed can literally live for centuries. And we think that this is a very economical way of preserving plants. If you just try and grow them in captivity, you're liable to lose them eventually. But by having a collection in a deep freeze, it's safe there for a long period of time. In the years since Kupovitz began his work here at Irvine, his dream of seeing other gardens get involved with this endeavor has indeed come true. Kupovitz's book, called Plant Extinction, A Global Crisis, has helped to publicize the dangers that plants face. In other writings and in lectures, he informs weekend hikers and wildflower lovers of what they can do to protect plants. He advises them to watch which wildflowers they pick, to be careful of the plant's habitats, and not to buy seeds collected in the wild. When we started this project about 10 years ago, 
We were the only garden in the Western Hemisphere that was at all concerned about saving endangered plant species. And we've built up a collection of about 5,000 accessions, 200 of which are critically endangered. Um, we now um, are only one of several gardens that are concerned with plant conservation. There's the Berry Arboretum in Oregon that saves the flora of the Pacific Northwest. And there's something called the Center for Plant Conservation, which controls a consortium of botanic gardens all across the country that are concerned with saving the endangered flora of the United States. For millennia, people have relied on plants to treat illness. Today, a quarter of all prescription drugs are derived from plants. One of the most important of the modern medicinal plants is the periwinkle, Catharanthus roseus, from the island of Madagascar. This plant has in its leaves a large number of alkaloids used for combating cancer. Before we had this plant, a person who contracted leukemia had an 80% chance of dying within the first few years. Now a person who gets leukemia um, has a good chance of surviving and being almost cured. But we don't cure everybody who gets leukemia. Um, there may be in the forests of Madagascar a relative of these periwinkles, which have much better chemicals, which will allow one to cure cancer completely. There's also a good chance that the, that plant is one of the plants that went extinct yesterday, because the forests of Madagascar are nearly all gone. In vast parts of the world where access to modern medicine is scarce, plants are the only source of medicine. The plant that the Mexicans call barbasco, which they say is good for the heart, is the source of a modern contraceptive. This Bedouin chieftain and healer applies ancient Greco-Arabic medical techniques. He uses rubia to treat the common cold and hansel to treat earache. The Chinese have for centuries derived remedies from the ginkgo tree. Recently, a substance was found in the ginkgo that is now used in coronary care. Many other important discoveries about the healing properties of plants have been made in just the last decade. The efforts of Kupovitz and others to slow the rate of plant extinctions will give us the opportunity to learn more about the medicinal properties of plants. The National Cancer Institute in the United States has recently sent botanists around the world to the Amazon, to Africa, and to Southeast Asia in an effort to collect endangered plants and screen them for their value in the treatment of cancer. Kupovitz's work is important not only because it can help save a given species from being wiped out entirely, but also because it can help preserve variety within a species, what is known as genetic diversity. Without a diversity of genes in its population, a species is helpless when it comes time to evolve a new way to capture food in its environment, or to develop a new defense against a pest or predator. That's bad not just for the plant, but also for us. What makes plants such good sources of food and medicine is precisely the fact that in response to changes in their environment, they are machines of biochemical ingenuity. Biologists have learned the lesson, the painful lesson, that when you try to reintroduce a species into the wild, you need more than just a handful of individuals. You need a diverse population. There are many reasons to save endangered plants and several ways to do so. There are traditional means, protecting their habitats, growing them in arboreta, and there are new techniques, such as Kupovitz's cryogenic gene bank. When we save an endangered plant, we save a part of our future. The work of Kupovitz and others raises the odds that a beautiful wildflower will be there for our children to enjoy. It preserves the chance that we might find a new source of food, that we might be able to treat a dreaded disease.